Hey there, pals. Remember that awesome movie from 2014 called Interstellar, directed by Christopher Nolan? Well, in that movie, they showed space stuff like wormholes, black holes, and alien planets in a really accurate way. But the most mind-blowing part was at the end. You see, the main character Cooper goes into a super-duper powerful black hole called Gargantua. He's in his spaceship, and as he falls deeper, he sees these tiny grain-like things that bump into his ship and make it all scratched up. Then there are these bright flashes, sparks, and his ship catches fire. So he has to leave his ship and keeps falling into the black hole. Suddenly, boom, he's in this super weird place that's like five-dimensional. Imagine a fancy shape called a tesseract. It's like a mind-bending maze where he can talk to his past self using gravity. Pretty crazy, huh? You might have wondered if this kind of thing could really happen. Do black holes actually have this stuff inside? If we ever fell into one, what would we even see? Well, let's dive into these mind-boggling questions in today's video. Let's start at the beginning of this story, my friends. The history of black holes isn't very long. 100 years ago, people didn't know about black holes. But because of Einstein's ideas about how things move, we eventually found out about them. Einstein had two main ideas called the Special Theory of Relativity and the General Theory of Relativity. The first one, from 1905, talks about how speed affects time. If you're in a super-fast spaceship, time will slow down for you compared to people on Earth. Even though you won't notice it, when you come back, you'll see that time passed differently for you. This is like time travel in a way. The second idea from 1915 is about gravity, which pulls things together. Einstein said that strong gravity can also slow down time, and this was shown in the movie Interstellar. Imagine everything in space is on a bendy fabric, like a trampoline. Big things make the fabric bend, and when it bends, time slows down. This bending also affects light, heat, and sound. This was a big deal because it meant there could be things with super strong gravity that even light can't escape. We call these things black holes. Einstein's ideas were really important, but he didn't think black holes were real. He thought they were strange and maybe impossible, like infinity. He didn't even have a name for them when he was alive. A cool thing he said was that the speed of light stops gravity from working instantly. If the sun disappeared, we'd still see its light for eight minutes, but gravity would take eight minutes to tell us it's gone. Other scientists worked on Einstein's ideas and figured out that black holes could be real. By the 1960s, they agreed that black holes exist and we might be able to see them for real one day because they're out there in space. The term black hole was used for the first time by a magazine in 1964. But only after 1967 did the term gain popularity when physicist John Wheeler popularized it. Even though the term black hole sounds quite sensational, it is a misleading name black hole. It might sound like there's an actual hole there, but that's not the case. There's no hole in the space. Black holes are formed by stars, so there's some material at its center. But in the stars, even our sun is a star. There's a continuous nuclear fusion reaction at their center. These reactions produce heat and light. The heat being produced sends a force outwards, and at the center of the star, there's the force of gravity. This helps the star remain intact and alive. This is how the stars maintain equilibrium throughout their lives, the forces pushing outwards due to the reaction, and the forces pulling inwards due to gravity. But these reactions take place when a fuel exists, either hydrogen or helium. The fuel wouldn't always be there. It would get burned up at some point. And when the fuel ends, there wouldn't be any forces pushing outwards. And the gravitational force pulling inwards wouldn't be countered by an equal force, so that star will collapse on itself because of its own gravity. This will take a long time, by the way. Our sun's life expectancy is around 10 billion years. But what happens next depends on the mass of the star. Let's look at the chart of the life cycle of a star. If the mass of the star isn't high, that is, if it was a small or average-sized star, it turns into a red giant, after which it can become a planetary nebula or a white dwarf. But if it was a huge star, a star with a lot of mass, when it runs out of fuel, it cools down and turns into a red supergiant. And then the supergiant bursts and turns into a supernova. After this, a tiny core remains. 
If the core is tiny, it is called a neutron star, but anything bigger than that we call it a black hole. Basically speaking, the mass of the star after it collapses due to its gravitational force becomes small and condensed. It can turn into a black hole. Specifically, how small is the volume of the compressed star? For a star as big as our sun, if that turns into a black hole, the diameter of that black hole will be merely 50 kilometers. Can you imagine the volume getting this small? But the interesting thing here is that our sun will not grow up to be a black hole. This was proven by an Indian-American astrophysicist, Subramanian Chandrasekhar. He developed the Chandrasekhar limit value. He said that the maximum mass of a white dwarf can be 1.4 times the mass of our sun, above which it cannot be stable and would turn into either a neutron star or a black hole. But since our sun, the sun, is under this limit, it will become a white dwarf instead of a black hole. Now that you've understood why black hole exists, now let's understand how black holes are. There are mainly three, four types of black holes. Friends. The first is the stellar black hole. That is the most common type of black hole. The black holes that were created by stars. Scientists estimate that in our Milky Way galaxy, there are anywhere between 10 million to 1 billion such black holes. Then there are the primordial black holes. These black holes are as small as an atom, but their mass is like that of a mountain. It is an assumption that they are as small as an atom. Friends, these black holes are merely theoretical, hypothetical. We do not know much about these. The third type of black hole is the supermassive black hole. These black holes are enormous, so big that their mass is more than that of one million suns combined. And it fits into a ball whose diameter is as big as that of our solar system. Scientists believe that at the center of every major galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole. The supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy is called Sagittarius A. The black hole in the film Interstellar that was named Gargantua was said to be a supermassive black hole. Additionally, scientists believe that there may be a fourth type of black hole too. Though it cannot be said for sure, the fourth type of black hole will be the intermediate black hole. That lies somewhere between the sizes of stellar and supermassive black holes, although no proof of it has been discovered yet. In the movie Interstellar and some photos, black holes aren't like a big ball that sucks everything in. They look more like a picture I've seen. In the picture, there's a bright ring around the black hole, which is called the accretion disk. It's important because stuff gets pulled towards the black hole due to its strong gravity. This stuff gets super hot and glows like fire. Just like how planets go around the sun because of its gravity, things around a black hole also go in circles. But black holes have super strong gravity, so things move super fast and get very hot. They start to glow and emit X-rays, which we can't see with our eyes. In the movie and pictures, they show this as orange, but it's really closer to blue. In real photos, you can see that one side of the glowing stuff is brighter and the other side is dimmer. This happens because of how things are moving. If something's coming towards us, it looks brighter. If it's moving away, it looks dimmer. This is called the Doppler beaming effect. In the movie, you might notice that the glowing ring seems to cover the top and bottom of the black hole. This happens because the gravity of the black hole bends light, making it look that way from the sides. But if you looked from the top, the ring would look like a regular circle. If you could go close to a black hole, you'd see a circle of light called the photosphere. Light orbits the black hole here. Imagine particles of light going in a ring, like a hula hoop. This means that theoretically, if you were there, you could even see the back of your head. Past the photosphere is the event horizon, like a boundary. Beyond this point, the gravity is so strong that even light can't escape. Everything becomes black there. So black holes are more like glowing rings with super strong gravity that does some really weird things to light and matter around them. Imagine falling into a black hole, which is a super strong gravitational pull that even light can't escape. If you cross a point called the event horizon, you're stuck inside for good. In the movie Interstellar, they show a spaceship going into a black hole and then reaching a strange space. But that's just made up because we don't really know what's inside a black hole. The movie tried to be accurate with science, but some parts were just guesses. 
Scientists think the center of a black hole is called a singularity. It's a place where space and time are bent a lot. The heavier something is, the more it bends space-time. Inside a black hole, it's bent so much that it stretches infinitely. Time slows down a lot near a black hole and we don't know what happens when it slows down so much. Maybe if you somehow got out of a black hole, a lot of time would have passed outside. Some theories say that inside a black hole, you might be able to see things because light bounces around a lot before reaching the center. We only have one picture of a black hole, taken in 2019, which helped prove they're real. If you fell into a black hole, you'd get torn apart by the strong gravity in a split second. It wouldn't be a pleasant experience at all. Hey friends, don't worry about black holes. In the past, many people thought they would gobble up everything and destroy the universe. But that's not true. Imagine a big city at the heart of each galaxy, where a supermassive black hole lives. Just like planets go around the sun, other planets and stars also go around this black hole. It's like a cosmic dance that keeps things in order, making galaxies even more amazing. If you like this video, you can see more about space. Don't miss the one on time travel if you haven't seen it. They explain these ideas really well there, thanks.